Let's get cracking. We'll start with Fraser Dayton from uh, Sky Sports News. Go ahead, Fraser. Hi, Dom. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, just how quickly did the celebrations uh, after the first test turn to concentration on the second, knowing full well that uh, Pakistan would be really smarting from that result? Yeah, obviously, um, you know, when you win a test match like that in that fashion, it's nice to, uh, you know, sit down and recognise everyone's efforts and, um but yeah, as you say, very quickly sort of turning around and um, discussing about the second test and obviously the long drive down to Southampton, um, for, you know, getting the focus on for, for Thursday. So yeah, excited to get going. Obviously, we've had the news too that uh, Ben Stokes is not going to be uh, partaking in this the rest of this series. Um, just how much are you, you going to miss him? Yeah, look, obviously he's a massive um, he's a massive part of our team and he's obviously you know one of the one of the best players in the world but um, you know obviously family comes first and you know we'll be supporting him with everything that's going on and um, yeah look we'll have to um, you know we'll have to sort of make doing his absence and uh, people are going to have to step up and um, no it's going to be it's going to be uh, it's going to be good but um, yeah we wish we wish Ben all the best Obviously it's opened up the debate again as usual as to how to, to balance out the side now what are your thoughts on, on the, the questions that the selectors now have in terms of, of who to bring in? Oh, it's a bit above my pay grade, I reckon. That one. But uh, no, nah, it's um, I don't know. To be honest, I think um, you know, obviously, winning the winning the last game was was brilliant, and um, the team, this, this, the balance for that side was, um, you know, the way that we had it for West Indies. So, look, I'm not too sure. I'm just you know, train hard, hard and do my thing, and uh, try and score as many runs as, uh, as possible on Thursday. And just finally, for me, um, you've all had a pretty good look now at the uh, attacking lineup from Pakistan's bowlers. So just how talented are they? Do you think what sort of challenges are you facing now? Do you think? No, they're a very good attack. Obviously, you know they've they've got a bit of everything in terms of you know they've got um, Abbas who who's very accurate, and they've obviously got left arm angle and um, the youngster who's got some pace and has bowled really well last week. So. And obviously they've got world class spinner, so you know it's a it's a it's a very good attack and um but yeah, we've had a look and obviously now it's a case of trying to adapt and prepare as well as possible for um for Thursday and yeah, make sure that we're ready to go. Thanks, Tom. Will McPherson, please. Hi, Dom, you're just talking about their attack there, but how how difficult are they to get used to as a test attack given they've got so many different threats, or at least more different threats than um, you know, you come up against some attacks and they've got three right arm seamers and offy, say, but th- this lot are quite different, aren't they? How, how hard are they to get used to? And what sort of progress do you think you and Rory particularly made in getting used to them uh, in the course of the first test? Yeah, look, like you said, it's, it's different challenges the whole time. And I think, um, especially on that wicket as well, I think it probably suited them them pretty well. It was, it was I think it was, you know, the conditions that they had in Manchester were probably the most, um, you know, suitable to their attack that they might get over here. So it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting to see what wicket we've got here in Southampton. But I think, you know, what, what me and Rory did in, in the first thing is I, I sort of definitely made a big effort to try and get further out to Abbas um, and try and negate his, you know, his main weapon of nipping the ball um, back into my pads. And um, But at the same time, I, you know, in the, in the first innings, I'd, I've played against him a few times in county cricket and, and had success against him back normally. So... That was my thinking in the in the first in the first innings, but on that wicket, I felt that in the second innings, I probably needed to get a bit further out. But um, yeah, I suppose we just got to try and adapt to this wicket here and see what see what their their threat is like on that. Okay, Lawrence, please. Hi, Dom. I'm just picking up on what what you said there about sort of batting further out your crease in in the second innings. I mean, in, in this sort of age of video analysis and so on, everyone can see. What everyone else is doing is—is is there a special over you comfortable making that change sort of halfway through the game? Yeah, I was comfortable doing that. Um, I think uh, in county cricket, um, I've you know you batted outside my crease certain bowlers and and, and triggered forward. Um, so yeah, I was I was comfortable you know having discussions with uh, 4P and a few of the other batters to you know always discussing you know not just the bass but the other bowlers what threat that they. They pose and how best to deal with that, and I suppose that's you know the, the main thing that I'm sort of learning about Test cricket is that you know you've got to keep you've got to keep moving forward, um, trying to adapt, like you said, trying to stay one step ahead, um, and yeah, like that, that comes from sort of you know chatting to other people and sort of trying to gain as much knowledge from them as possible. 
just okay mike walters please hi dom just going back to what will was saying about the variety of uh, pakistan's attack is the biggest problem for batsmen not just their variety but the quality the sustained quality that comes with it yeah definitely um you know they you know they've obviously got a lot of variety like you said but you know it's all well having all well and good having variety but if you don't have you know the accuracy and the and the skill level there to back it up then it's um you can obviously try and pick them off but you know they show that they're a very impressive attack um they you like you said they got all the variety and the skills so you know we'll be have to be at our best in the next two test matches to be able to cope with them because you know we know that they're they, they are a very dangerous bowling attack as opening batsman dom um you've built a, a, a reputation for being adhesive and uh, for crease occupation and for being not throwing your wicket away uh, and, and good for you. When you're up against such a high quality attack, does that increase the premium on keeping the scoreboard moving as opposed to just crease occupation on its own? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, I'm always, I think it's, you know, 10, 10 test matches I've played, I'm trying to learn and trying to improve as much as possible and, you know, that's the thing that, you know, I probably need to do a little bit better, especially against spin, is try and rotate the strike as much as possible, um, be a bit more proactive. And I've been working really hard on that with um, with a few of the guys, Thorpey and, and a few of the players, chatting to them. And um, it's just a case, yeah, for me, of trying to make sure that it's, it's a fine balance, I suppose, because I, I want to be out there and spend as much and put such a high price on my wicket and, and do a good job for the team. But at the same time, I you know, trying to find that balance between having the bravery to play the shots that I feel like I know that I have um, in the locker, but it's just a case of having the bravery and the confidence to do that in, a, in the test arena when, you know, the scrutiny is high and you, you might get judged for how you get out and stuff like that. Thank you. Okay, Matt, quick info. Yeah, hi, Dom. Um, just on uh, facing spin, I think Yassir is the first leg spinner you've faced in your test career so far. Could you sort of tell us a bit about the, the challenge that that brings for you? Uh, yeah, look, he's a good bowler. Um, obviously, on that wicket as well, it was. Um, uh, I think he. I think he said to one of our players that it was. Um, it was uh, on the on that fourth day. It was better than bowling in Dubai. So um, it was. Uh, it was good for you know good conditions for a spinner. But yeah, a good challenge, and it's a good like it's always good to test yourself against the best. And I think um, I was. I was obviously extremely disappointed with the way I got out in that second innings because I'd worked really hard and. Um, I'd been really disciplined against him, and I, I did have, I did feel like I was, I wanted to be that person to be there, not out at the end when we chased that down, but um, wasn't to be. And try and learn from from those mistakes. And, and just on the work you've been doing against Spin, obviously we don't know for sure yet, but meant to be touring Sri Lanka and India this winter. Is that one of the reasons you feel like it's such an important work on for you? Yeah, I think yeah, definitely. I think well, there's things against pace bowlers that I'm working on as well. Um, it's, yeah, I suppose it's just the case for me. I feel I feel confident in in playing spin, um, and I have done. And I suppose when you get to this level, and um, suddenly you know loads of eyes are on you, and you maybe not scoring as quickly as other people in the team, you, you get judged. And um, yeah, I've always felt very confident and scored runs against um, good bowlers in county cricket. But when you get to international cricket, I suppose yeah, with the spotlight being on you, you get those things sort of um, pointed out a bit more. And yeah, it's just made me think that I need to work a bit harder and playing with when you play, when you're back with someone like Rooty at the other end who's making playing spin look pretty easy and um yeah it makes me think that you know I need to you know try and take my game against spin to the next level. Ali Martin please. Hi Dom. Um hi, uh, hi mate. Just a quick one. At, at the start of the summer you um you sort of spoke about the kind of hard work that you put in physically and you kind of been inspired by Ben Stokes to get and and others to sort of get yourself in the most sort of peak condition you could be. I'm just wondering Thinking back to that run out, which was a pretty key moment um, in terms of bowling out Pakistan's second innings, I'm just wondering. Do you, it's a bit tricky because it's a parallel universe. But do you think that run out happens if you if you haven't put that work in, or, or how, how do you sort of uh, do that? Uh, do, do you know, I haven't, I haven't thought about that. I suppose, but um, maybe not. Um, yeah, obviously, I think they went through a little period in that game where they were. I think I think it was Shadab and Rizwan. Maybe they were. Um, they were taking quick singles left, right, and centre, and it, we felt in the ring, especially myself. I think it was me, Ollie Pope, and Don Bess. 
we were saying we needed to be like a lot tighter and you know to make sure because obviously for a bowler it's a bit of a nightmare if you if they keep rotating the strike and you've got plans for certain bowlers and they they were rotating and running quite well although we did have chances to run them out so it was something we had discussed and um, for me it was more a case of anticipation and um, yeah trying to make something happen because I did feel like there was going to be a chance at some point and yeah I was yeah, lucky to do, uh, hit hit the start, hit the sticks but you uh, you must. You must be enjoying moving more. Fr- like I'm not saying you were that cumbersome before. You get what I mean. It's kind of it must. It must feel pretty great to pull off a run out like that. No, it was obviously yeah. Like you said, it was quite a key moment, and um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit uh, a bit light on my feet. And um, no, nah, it's, uh, it's it's good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, like obviously losing the weight and stuff has has, has been nice. And I, although I did feel a bit more tired after my hundred in the second test case first Indies, which is I think was probably my body getting used to batting with uh, a bit less weight on me. Cracking cheers. And two more, Nicole and John Etheridge. Hi, Don. What, uh, what sort of stuff are you doing to keep the weight down? Are you, are you following a special diet? Are you doing lots of running? Or, or is it just now just the cricket keeps you that? Because keeps, keeps, it's so draining? I don't know, mate. Uh, cricket's one of those ones. I feel like for some people, it's, uh, you, that's enough. For me, it's definitely not. So um, I've got to yeah, watch what I eat and make sure I get in the gym a little bit. Um, but yeah, look, it's obviously with the bubble that we're in, it's, there's not much else you can do. So um, I suppose for me, maybe the challenge will come when we're outside the bubble and there's, uh, you know, there's other stuff going on and to, to, to keep working hard on, on, that, on that side of my game. So it's, it's definitely something that I don't want to let, I want to keep improving that. And I think I'm, although I've done, done well so far, I've still got, you know, I've still got a lot more to do. So that's something that's in the back of my mind is that although I've obviously, you know, done some, Hard work is probably only about halfway there. So you own, you jogging after play? Are you going to the gym? Are you just uh, a little bit? Yeah, like if I, so for example, if I get a low score, I'll try and go and get something done so that I don't sit around and have tea and biscuits all day watching the other boys get run. So, um, but um, now it's yeah, it's just a case of like you know trying to bet yourself every day, and um, I think that's the good great thing about the environment that these guys have um, set here is that, you know, there's always an example of someone who's, you know, working hard and um, even if you have failed, you know, as, as a batter in the day, you can try and get something out of, uh, get something out of the rest of it. How are you sort of dealing with the scrutiny? You mentioned it earlier about, you know, you, you play, you, there's so many eyes on you at test level that you don't get in county cricket. Are you, are you taking any advice from anyone? Has anybody said to you, you know, giving you any tips on how to deal with that sort of seeing sky di- dissect your technique and people write about it and all that sort of stuff? No, to be honest, I think uh, um, look, uh, it's it's um, it's one of those things that you've got to get used to quickly. And um, the only time when it surprised me was that when I got a hundred and people were still maybe making comments, and I was that was a little bit of an eye opener because um, I suppose you get a hundred in county cricket, everyone just sings your pages, so. Um, but I suppose yeah, that's that was probably the only time. But I just you know like you know have my my family that I chat to, my my close mates, and obviously I know that if my teammates think I'm doing something not right, they'll tell me. So um, yeah, it's uh, that, uh, just trying to stick to people that are close to me. Yeah. Cheers, thank you, John Etheridge, and then we'll finish with Jonathan Veal. Um, uh, you t- ten test matches in now. I mean, how do you think generally you're, you're shaping up as a, t- as a test match to bring back? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, if you said to, uh, after 10 test matches, you'd be um, averaging 40 in two test match hundreds, I'd be I'd be pleased. But at the same time, I do feel sitting here now that um, I've got a lot more to give. Um, I'm not, I've only sort of shown myself to a certain level at, at this stage and I do feel like I've let opportunity slip to score maybe four or five hundreds. I know that might be sounding greedy and... Um, it might sound it might sound a bit unrealistic, but I, that's you know the way I think, and um, I think that you know I just need to keep trying to build on what I'm doing and try and take the positives and um, yeah, try and score a few more big uh, big scores this summer. You've not felt out of your depth. You've not you know you've not faced bowlers that you think bloody hell I can't you know I'd never get a run against this bloke. So you're feeling quite reasonably comfortable. Yeah, yeah look, I, I, I think um, the, the the secret is you know it does feel tough at times, and you know there is periods you know where bowlers bowl well at you and you do feel like oh my goodness I'm not sure I'm gonna how I'm gonna score big runs against this this guy but it's just a case of getting through that and and as you know that people always say um you know batting does get easier and 
that's something that I try and do. And yeah, I, I do feel, yeah, I feel I'm starting to feel more comfortable every time I go out to bat. And um, yeah, it's obviously there are some amazing bowlers out there, but I, I'll always back myself. Yeah, just finally, uh, uh, Rory's 20 test matches in now, I think. So are you pretty confident that the two of you can establish a, a long term opening partnership? Yeah, I, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, um, I think obviously, I, he, I think Burns would probably say the same as me. I think we've both, you know, um, knowing his character and the way that he thinks about the game is similar to me and I know that he, he'd be he'd be greedy and say that he'd like a few more hundreds and um, I think that's probably something that's is good for us to drive us hopefully as, as a partnership forward and make each other you know having that sort of little competition of you know maybe who, who scores more hundreds or whatever and um, will stand us in good stead and yeah hopefully um, you know obviously good friends of him and played with him a lot in my career and hopefully yeah the amount of, we can play a lot more games together for England so realistically, there's no reason to think you, you can't be together in you know two, three, or even five years' time. I'd lo- I, yeah, I'd love that to be the case, but obviously, you know, it's uh, we need to keep scoring runs and keep putting um, fifty and hundred partnerships on the board, which make obviously makes makes the well sets the game up for the other guys coming in. And um, yeah, I think obviously, it's, I think it's shown that we've um, you know over the last few test matches um, we've we've got some big first inning scores and when, when we can do that as a team and we can accelerate through the middle order and then take 20 wickets it's uh, you know it's a pretty good template to to win f- um, five day cricket so um, you know hopefully we can just keep trying to contribute to, to the team's success and Jonathan to finish off yeah. Hi there Tom just going back to, to Ben Stokes there's been quite a few players leave the bubble this summer for personal reasons um, has it been harder than you expected it to be to be locked away at the stage? Sorry, I was breaking up a little bit there. Just with um, and just the latest play of quite a few to leave for personal reasons, leave the bubble for personal reasons. Has it been harder than you expected it to be? Uh, you know, being locked in the stadiums. Yeah, look, I, I think obviously for for Ben and Dan, it's uh, it's different. It's for the for their family, and that's. You know, family's the most important thing. I think for for you know the guys who, um, for, for us, it's, it's it's been you know it's obviously not been normal, so it's obviously different. And um, I think it's been great to be back playing and being back around the lads and and having that sort of dressing room um, environment and banter going along. And but obviously, you know, I've, it's a bit easier for me, I think, because I don't have like a, a wife or or kids and yeah. stuff. So. I know, I know that maybe it might be tougher for for some of the other guys who who are away from their families for a long period of time. But um, yeah, I think it has been it hasn't hasn't been normal. So it's it's been, it's been it's been great to be back, but at the same time, it's been different. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Cheers.